All right, hello everyone. Welcome to week eight of Figma Decal. Today we're going to be talking about advanced prototyping and smart animate. Um, but first, I want to just kind of check in how the midterm was completed last week. Um, thank you all for doing this. I am very, very excited to look at everybody's work. This is always like one of my favorite parts of the class is getting to see what everybody makes. I hope you had some fun with it. Um, and then this is our last lecture before spring break. So at the end of the lecture, I'll be talking a little bit about what to expect moving forward. Um, but yeah, today we're going to be talking about advanced prototyping. Um, so this is going to talk back into week five. So we know that week five was about prototyping. It's also the week that we introduced the midterm. So we understand if you didn't get a lot of chance to practice it. So this week is going to dive right back into it um, and let you learn a little bit more about how to like power up your prototyping uh, skills. We're also going to talk about some other handy shortcuts, a little bit about like properties of animation in user experience and also just in general. Um, and then we'll wrap up for um, the week. So the attendance link is right here, bit.ly slash FD SB23 like eight. Um, if anybody's having any issues with this, please raise your hand and let me know. Um, but it's the same general format as usual. I'm going to look up for a second. And then as per usual, the slide deck link is the same format. It's bit.ly slash figma decal dash like eight. Um, I'm going to move to the next slide to show you that now. Um, here's the slide deck link as usual, bit.ly slash figma decal hyphen like eight. All right. Uh, if you ever need those later in the lecture, just let me know. So first thing we're going to do is do a quick review of what prototyping is. So we talked about it a couple of weeks ago. Um, but prototyping is, again, the idea of adding interaction to your design work. Um, so when you do all of the physical design that you see, or I guess the digital design that you do in the canvas, um, in order to mimic what the experience is like, the kind of feeling of interaction as an actual user, we add this layer of prototyping, which basically is where you tell the interface what happens when people interact with it? Where do you go? What changes? What moves? What shifts? Um, in the context of Figma, we're also making sure that we think about the word prototyping specifically about this concept, where the idea of prototyping is also sometimes um, the idea of making like low fidelity mockups of something. Um, that's a piece of what prototyping is. The terminology is just kind of confusing. Um, but when we talk about prototyping in this class, we're talking about all of these blue noodles. Um, the idea here is to essentially form connections between two objects within a frame or to form connections between different frames. Um, the core idea is just to get from point A to point B. You can add multiple kinds of connections from a single object. Um, you can add basically as many points of connection as you really need or as you really want, as feels fit for whatever it is that you're creating. Um, and the three components of a prototyping interaction are the trigger, which is the user interaction. So what is the human being doing um, to interact with the interface? The action, which is what happens to the interface, and then the animation, which is how you get from point A to point B. What does it look like um, when that action actually happens? And that's the part that we're going to be focusing on today. This is um, a quick recap of what some of the default animations are um, besides Smart Animate. And today we're going to discuss what it actually means when we say Smart Animate. Um, but this is what probably what you've been working with um, so far, um, if you've done it in the midterm or just in kind of the week five content. Um, so Smart Animate is kind of what it sounds like, where Figma is able to figure out what do you want the in-between frames to look like, right? So Smart Animate is able to basically recognize matching layers that exist across multiple frames. Um, and for layers that do match, Figma is going to recognize and apply transitions smoothly between them. So instead of you having to figure out what is going to look like when those two things move across the screen, Figma will kind of persist for you and figure out what it is that needs to happen, right? So this is an example of this interaction, where if you click on different parts of the screen, a lot of different things don't move or some things do move. In this case, um, that particular card is deleted and the bottom items move up for you. Whoever inter uh, implemented this interaction, which we're actually going to do a demo of later, they do not have to put every single frame in between where this card moves up very slowly. They just need to have the start point and the end point. And Figma knows, hey, if you want all of these things to move up, I will animate those things moving up for you. That's what Smart Animate is doing. Um, you can basically select Smart Animate as a list um, or as an option in your list of animations when you're actually implementing prototyping. And this is a more complicated example of things that you're able to do with Smart Animate. So this is from Figma's examples. Um, this is all done completely within Figma. Um, they didn't do any kind of coding on top of this. This is all possible with Smart Animate. And I'm also going to show this example that I really particularly like. Um, this is a slide deck that a product designer on Figma's team actually created about how to design for Gen Z. So this is actually all created in Figma as well. You can see it's just a prototype. Um, and they use Smart Animate really, really cleverly. 
Um, so you have this kind of animation of things sliding in on their own, um, things moving as you go through the entire thing. They did not have to animate every single frame. Figma is filling in all of those gaps for you. They have this really interesting timeline animation. There's all sorts of things that they're able to do by just turning on Smart Animate. All this is happening without me actually interacting with it as well. Um, you can find this um, on Community as well if you look up Designing for Gen Z. Um, you can see a lot of the really interesting ways that you can implement Smart Animate um, in a lot of different ways. So I'm just going to kind of click through some of these. I just think this is really fun to look at. Uh, awesome. So. So this is another example of some more kinds of animations that Smart Animate can actually do. This is also created in Smart Animate. Um, and so this is the idea of just having things move slowly or smoothly across the screen where all these objects are kind of moving in and out. Um, and it's very helpful for things like loading sequences, parallax, scrolling, touch gestures, things that the animation is very important to the user experience. It feels jarring if an animation is bad. And if an animation is good, you're probably not going to notice it. That's kind of the nice thing about it. Um, the idea of animation in a lot of user experiences is to mimic the way that physical things move, right? When I do anything, if I push this table, I see it move. There's not just like it suddenly instantly dissolves from point A to point B. So a lot of the idea is that we're trying to mimic physical interactions and physical experiences on a digital screen. So these are some other examples. This is a loading animation of hold or refresh. Um, this is the way that you can do drop downs, have things kind of disappear, move in, move out. Um, yeah, so we'll talk a little bit also about um, general animation properties that apply to things beyond just UI UX. But any questions so far? We'll get into the actual um, mechanics of how to implement it as well. Um, I think that maybe my Zoom video is broken, so. We're just going to roll with it and color putting my audio. So apologies to anybody watching the Zoom recording uh, if I'm frozen kind of looking away. Uh, so some animation properties, if you're interested in learning 2D animation, 3D animation, the future for art reasons, uh, or just for like, your own creative purposes, this is all applicable to that as well. Um, so we're going to talk about keyframes. The idea of keyframes is especially important in UI UX because it's that starting point and ending point that we talked about. But you can also think about animation in the sense of like something like creating a walk cycle. What are the keyframes? What are the key moments looking for that define the starting and ending points is something like somebody walking. Um, so in making this kind of animation of somebody moving, um, there are these five main keyframes that animators would think about. There's the first contact of the foot, the body moving low, the leg that is behind passing forward, the leg then moving high, and then we're back at the contact, and they would repeat this process with the opposite leg. These are the moments that define what it means for a human being to walk. And the way that you decide on these keyframes dictates what the actual movement is going to look like um, in between. So those keyframes, again, moments in time where the action um, is particularly distinct and defining. So all of those in-between frames, everything that they filled in in this um, GIF on the, on the right side, um, those are kind of the, the in-betweens that you would say in animation. And that's where you can add a little bit of movement. That's where you can add a lot of the personality um, and the texture to your actual animation. Um, and so in this, like what may be visually simple example of a bouncing ball. There are a lot of frames already going on here. It's a one second animation, so there are 24 frames. Um, and so you see the way that this ball is going to distort as you're moving it to mimic what it actually looks like in real life. Um, each keyframe then has to be drawn out, specified, even with something like smart animation. So think of animations in general in UI UX or overall as the evolution of a state of something over time. So the way that something changes as time passes. So this can be through scale, rotation, color, whatever it is that helps us determine what we need to create for whatever animation that we're trying to portray. Um, if you see this kind of on off switch, this idea is just the way that you move from one state to another. Um, and the idea about why you would have even this really, really small UI element, even something like a slide or animate um, is because you can see that time passing of transition, even if that set time is a very, very brief fraction of a second. Cool. So these are the actual properties that Smart Animate is able to emulate or able to um, modify. Smart Animate is not necessarily 100% perfect. It can't predict exactly what you're thinking, but it is able to control a pretty wide variety of properties, including scale. Um, so if an object, I think these are supposed to be GIFs. I don't know why they're not working, but um, if an object changes in size between frames, Fig was able to animate it shrinking or growing. So scale is one. Position is another. This one is animated. So 
Um, these are the only two keyframes that we've decided in this animation, but Figma is able to fill in the blanks and tell you, um, hey, I know you want it from, from A to B, so we're going to fill in all of those spaces. Figma can recognize ob objects, X and Y coordinates, um, and then put it um, into all of those kind of in-between coordinates as well. Opacity is a third one where Figma is able to basically change the um, darkness or like transparency of a particular layer. Um, so you can see here, this goes from empty to full while this goes from full to empty. And then Figma is able to kind of fade that in very smoothly um, by modifying the opacity. Let's, okay, by modifying the opacity right here. There we go. Um, rotation. This one is kind of complicated. I think it um, is based on the way that all these individual objects are both moving in position and in their rotational angle. Um, and by doing this and by doing it the way that this designer created it, um, you're able to have this very nice effect of kind of a loading or something um, kind of reshifting. Um, so Smart Anime can take the layer's rotation, which is, again, that kind of percentage where if we look in an actual item here, um, the rotation angle is listed right here. And Figma can manipulate that to fill in all of the blanks in between. Fill can also change, where Figma can uh, allow you to animate changes between solid colors, gradients, and images. Um, so you can see here that it becomes a little bit of a teal when it's going between these two colors. Um, going from blue to green and green to blue, it kind of hits this mid-color of a teal in between. Cool. Any questions about what Smart Animate is able to uh, control? Okay, cool. All right, so advanced prototyping. Um, how do we actually put these kind of transition ideas and smart animation together? Um, so transitions with smart animate are defined in that prototyping panel. So this is getting into the mechanics of how to actually implement this. When you connect two frames in an action, uh, there's those three triggers that we talked, or those three components that we talked about, the trigger, um, the interact, uh, the action, and the animation. So smart animate is one specific animation that you can apply. Um, so if we're doing this and we say that when we click on this, we want it to smart animate into this frame, um, any guess what it's going to look like? How is this animation actually going to look when we click on the square based on if we apply smart animate? Any guesses? Yeah, exactly. So this rectangle is going to shrink when you click on it, and Smart Anime is going to fill in the blanks of the size that is going to hit. That's exactly right. Cool. So to actually do so, what we're going to do is open up the prototype tab on the right sidebar, connect those frames like you normally do for prototyping, um, and then define the interaction as Smart Animate um, in the transi uh, transition field. Um, you can then apply any kind of easing, which is that idea of those keyframes that we talked about. Easing is the speed at which the change happens. Um, if you wanted to ease in, it's going to kind of um, go slowly and then more quickly. If you wanted to ease out, it'll go quickly and then more slowly. Um, this gives this sense of more natural movement as opposed to something just move from point A to point B, where if you say, like, look at my hand moving from here to here, it's not a consistent movement time as I'm moving my hand. If you think about a ball bouncing into the air, you know how balls will um, basically slow down as they hit their peak, stop for a moment, and then go back down. So that's the idea of easing as well. Um, if you want to then combine those transitions with Smart Animate, um, if you want to have some layers smart animate, but everything else do what you would normally have them do, you can say smart animate only matching layers. Um, so Figma will use the main transition for layers that do not match and then use smart animate for things that do match. So in this case, we have something that is pushed where certain things are going to be pushed off of the screen, but things that do match are going to persist. Say, for example, we have um, a navigation bar at the bottom. Uh, or if you think about like your phone, you have your battery percentage at the very top of your phone, that never moves no matter, what, no matter what's going on in your phone. So even if you're kind of swiping away into the home screen, um, just because everything in the screen is moving, that battery percentage and the time is going to persist. So those are things that would be quote unquote smart animated because they're matching layers um, and you haven't moved them at all. Um, so again, this idea of matching layers is a really critical part of the um, smart animate needs in order to function correctly. So it does mean that you need to be careful about naming your layers. This is something that I'm certainly very guilty of. I have a lot of like rectangle 2045. Um, making sure that you actually rename your layers is critical to making sure that smart animate knows what's going on because they can only smart animate layers with the same names. So we're going to talk a little bit about good renaming habits later as well. 
So when we have this kind of transition implemented, you can see in this example, the way that content is going to be moving or pushed from the um, right to the left. Um, so in this example, you see that there are certain things that are smart animated because they don't move, namely those kind of top elements that I talked about, the battery, the time, um, and then also this whole navigation bar. So there's parts of this navigation bar that move, like the item that is highlighted, but this black rectangle that's behind it stays the same place um, because they are smart animated matching layers. Um, we've told Figma, hey, these layers are the same. Don't move them because I didn't tell you to move them. Everything else, um, in contrast, will use that push element that we talked about before. Cool. So with that, we're going to go ahead and do an actual demo of Smart Animate. Um, if you are following on on your own copy of the lecture slides, you can go to the demo, and then I will just be implementing all of this. Um, so uh, we have these are the components used for this particular example. Let's go ahead and actually watch the flow of what this is going to look like before we go ahead and try the demo. Um, so this is the home screen. We're going to be able to go to the bookmarks, and then we're going to be able to swipe something away. So I'm going to click on the bookmark section. Um, when I have this, I can drag it. I can move this along. And then when I delete it, it'll go away. This bottom item is going to automatically go up. If I undo it, we're going to return back to this state, right? So I'm able to drag this around. Um, and then move this. So the idea here is just like a swipe to delete animation, which you might see in like your emails or something like Spotify, um, where your swiping is going to automatically do something, as you can see here. Awesome. So we're going to try our best to implement this now. So on the bottom side, um, on your second copy of all these things, you're able to reference what the transitions are here so that we can make sure that it's consistent. Um, but let's go ahead and start with this first example. Uh, so. We see that here it's going to have this push option where the top part does not actually leave the screen. The middle part leaves the screen, and the bottom part stays as well. So the top part is going to only fade. Um, one note about Smart Animate is that when it doesn't know how to change the items, it's going to automatically just dissolve instead. So we're going to see that when we do this here. Um, so I want to add an interaction from the bookmarks bar to the actual bookmarks screen. And I'm going to say, make this a push. Uh, and then let's say let's not animate smart uh, animate right now. Let's have it. Let's see what it looks like if we don't do that. So if I don't, you see the entire screen is moving, right? So all of this bottom bar section, everything is moving to the left, which is a little bit jarring, as you can see here. So if I instead change this to say smart animate matching layers, um, only these things are going to move in the middle, and that's because certain things have the same names. This is specifically important here, where we have the header also be called header. If I were to rename this to be like something completely different, um, and then I had all of these different things named differently as well, they are not going to smart animate anymore. So when I click here, you see that top section actually moves as well instead of being uh, persistent like before. Um, so that's because those names are different. I know I'm kind of like reiterating the same thing over and over again, but the reason why is because if you're ever having issues with smart animate, 98% of the time the layer naming is the problem. So we just want to like drill that in there um, as best as we can. So anyway. First um, interaction is done here. These things are moving in. The next thing that we want to do with this frame is say that if I drag this out, it's going to be able to move here. So we're going to connect this to this entire frame, uh, I believe. So, oh wait, no, my bad. It does not do that. We connect this, yes, to the entire screen. Um, and then we say on drag instead of on click. So drag means it's going to give us the ability to kind of move this back and forth a little bit. We see that's kind of wonky right now um, because some things are not named correctly. Um, so when we go back here, we do say smart anime matching layers. As we have uh, here, we have smart anime overall. Um, so we don't want this push feature um, here because if we do have the push, that's why that uh, all of that was happening just now. So if I undo that and say push, um, all of the stuff on the top, this kind of weird red box is going to push in because I haven't told that to smart animate. Um, so instead, we're going to just say smart animate this. Um, and then this is going to move in smoothly. The reason why that happens is because this entire box um, is just fading in. It's dissolving in, which is why it appears as if it just kind of uh, manifested there. From there, we can say that when we let go of this drag movement, when I no longer want to, um, where I want to actually finish the delete movement, I'm going to let go of the mouse and leave it, uh, move it out away from that entire card. It's going to move into this next screen. So now when I say here, I go into this, I can say uh, mouse leave, or actually I guess mouse up is probably more accurate. Um, it's going to actually get rid of that. 
and move from this entire screen to this entire screen. And now if I don't smart animate things, if I say instead um, dissolve, or actually no, I guess I, there's not really a way to illustrate that. Um, but now if I move here, it's smart animating this all the way over. When I drag this and I let go, oh my goodness. I guess we do have to change this to be mouse leave. So when I let go and remove my mouse, um, it's going to disappear and it smart animates into the next frame. Any questions about any of that so far? Awesome. So we'll add the last really quick thing, which is just that the undo button will go back to where we were before. Um, it'll go all the way back here, um, which is how we're kind of like cheesing this whole undo reaction. Um, and then you see that it kind of uh, dissolves itself back in very nicely. Um, this is also because of Smart Anime, and you're going to see that this entire card, instead of dissolving, is going to move back down um, because it knows that that's the position that it should be in. So that is the general gist of how to actually implement Smart Animate. There's some other additional things here where if you click on uh, this icon anywhere, it's going to bring us back. Um, and I'll show you one quick trick that you can do. If I prototype this um, to say go back on click, and I can say navigate to don't Smart Animate, you should push. Um, I believe that is correct. Yeah. Oh, wait. I wanted to push the other way um, to make the physical logic of this make a little bit more sense. So yeah, so when I go back and forth, these are going to push them back and forth. If I actually copy that entire bar down here and I replace these with that bar, um, that uh, prototype is actually also going to paste itself. Um, so when you copy paste objects, all of the interactions that you have on top of them are actually actually also going to be copy and pasted. Um, so I don't have to keep repeating the same thing over and over again. So now if at this point I drag this out, I get rid of it. If I click here, it's going to bring me back the same way. Cool. Any questions about Smart Animate? Awesome. We'll take a break for a couple of minutes then. Um, we'll break for five or so minutes as I also figure out what's going on with my computer. We'll, we'll come back at 6.13. Um, I should, there shouldn't be too much left in today's class. 